Good evening, everyone. I am your show host, Julie Hedges, and welcome to the Tarot Journey, only on Star Nations Radio Network. You have joined me here on the Tarot Journey by Julie Hedges page, and um, I'm really excited to be here this evening. It's been a real, a real challenge of um, a few months. And we're down here at the tail end of, of the year of December. And uh, welcome. It is Tarot Old Lang Syne tonight. And we're going to talk about reminiscing and nostalgia and memories and all of the things that we think about in this time of year. Um, old friends, new friends, what we've accomplished, what we're planning to embark on in the new year. So that's what this is designed uh, to be. So I wanted to have a real kind of a fireside chat tonight is what I was thinking. So uh, welcome. So we have Tara, we have Rob in the house. Good evening, Rob. And who else do we have coming on here? Um, give me a shout out, if you would, <laughs> in the chat room. Thank you for joining me on uh, the Tarot Journey by Julie Hedges page. And if you could, please share it to um, the Star Nations radio page. That would be wonderful. Get that, get that word out and invite as many people to come along. Hi, Jagger. Oh, it's Mary Ellen. Hi, Mary Ellen. <laughs> Thanks for being on here this evening. So um, inviting everyone to come along for the tarot journey. We're on a tarot adventure tonight. And we're going to go, we're going to take a look back. We're going to take a look back in our lives. And we're going to appreciate each other and appreciate um, uh, what we've accomplished. So hi, Holly. Welcome to the show. Hi, Mary Ellen. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Rob. Terrell. All Lang Syne. So, yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, why this topic? Um, I just wanted to slow things down a bit. We are quite, quite busy at this time of year, and I just wanted to Take a breather. I know I've been running gangbusters is what we call it. <laughs> um, my, my cart before my horse since about September. So I want to slow down a little bit. Hi, Neshi. Give you a shout out here. Oh, I love that. Um, thank you all for being here this evening. Um, so we're talking about what does Auld Lang Syne mean? We're going to get into that and talk about what it means for the wheel of the year, the cycle that we are completing. We're coming up on the end of 2017, why it's significant for this time, and um, talking about those old times past. So I wanted to give some announcements before we get into some things. Um, my book, The Tarot Journey, Volume 1. Let me make sure I get that into the camera. This is my copy that I let people thumb through. It's nice and well worn, as you can as you can tell. People are really enjoying the Tarot Journey Volume One. I have a special that I am running, a special that I am running through. I've extended it through the end of January, the end of January. So anyone who gets a Tarot Journey Volume One book, I am also including as my gift to you a tarot journey empowerment notebook and this is a can you hear it this is a hard back a hard back um notebook so tarot journey hardback notebook that you can record your adventures on your own tarot journey your thoughts and and uh what's occurring with your exploration of the tarot so I've got that going on and I also want to invite you to check out my poetry website I'm going to type the address here 
um, juliesoliloquy.com. Uh, poetry, let's see here. Did that come through? It takes a minute. I'm trying to get used to all this be life stuff. So juliesoliloquy.com is my poetry website. Poetry has been um, a real, oh goodness, uh, a real significant part of my tarot journey this year in, in healing and in exploring and expanding who I am. I've really turned to poetry and it's more that the words are just flying into my fingers and I have to do something with them. So I've been listening to what's coming through and I've been writing them down. And so I just want to share it with you. I want to share with you one of my poems. So uh, you will find this out here on um, the tarot, uh, juliesoliloquy.com. Uh, it is posted out there and I am eventually going to publish my works, but right now you can take a preview uh, on uh, the website, juliesoliloquy.com. I've got that there for you. This is called Love Me Out Loud. So I'm going to read it for us. Step into the garden of my delights. Let your eyes tickle me. Glance again. Your mind peaked. I know I have your gaze. Talk to me of wonderland places where you dream. Relieve this eerie silence. Be bold. I am the whole clear ocean. Your thoughts crash all around me. Rolling tones and trepid waves. Your eyes like crevices within me. Your hands mold the beckoning sea. Shoulders starlight nights. Curiosity propels you. Fly into me. Open your mouth. Love me out loud. So that one uh, was an original poem that came through at the end of August. And um, that is on my poetry website, juliesoliloquy.com. Hello, Denise. Thanks for coming on tonight. I appreciate you joining me here on the Tarot Journey um, on Star Nation's radio network. So that's just a little preview of, of my poetry. There, there are all kinds of things out there, just what, what is flowing through. The inspiration is coming through my fingers, and so I'm... I'm getting that out there. I'm getting it on paper. And that's been part of my own healing journey. But I know for a lot of people, this year has really been a catalyst for the birth of things that maybe have been dormant. And I'm going to say it's that um, celestial influence of the planet Uranus in the constellation of Aries, Uranus is the great enlightener and Aries is a great warrior. So some things that are inside of us that just have to come bursting out, that is definitely this influence. And as, as that planet is, is moving through to finish up its own journey through um, the ancient warrior known as Aries, these, these places of expansion within us do come bursting out. So if you find yourself with a brand new hobby or brand new friends, um, brand new explorations of, I didn't know I had that in me. Well, yes, you do. And here it is out. Here it is coming out for, for everyone there. So um, just a little bit of expansion. Um, from me. So again, that is uh, juliesoliloquy.com is, is my poetry website. And I'm adding things all the time as they are being birthed through me. I've also had a, um, been inspired by my friend and mentor, Denise Iwana Francisco. I've been enjoying her brand new book, 
prayers and incantations to the light and really enjoying the meditations and the prayers that she has been sharing live. And, and it, it really got me thinking about the tarot journey and um, where the tarot journey is going to go in 2018. So I invite you all to stay tuned that um, in 2018, we're going to do some little snippets throughout the month of um, the tarot journey and also including in there um, some astrology Saturdays to help you set up the month with what's going on with the stars, how they are helping us, supporting us, influencing us and bathing us in their light. What does it mean with all those things flying around up there? How does it affect me? How does it work in my own body? How does it work in my life? Um, we all know there is no coincidence. It's all God coincidence, right? It's the incidence of God plus us, plus our soul, plus our personality, our operating consciousness, allowing those things to, to merge and weave and become one for our own path. So coming in 2018, going to have some little snippets out there and um, I will keep you updated on that. So for, for our announcements on creating, I'll be creating an, a new group to be sharing some of those uh, live streams that you can participate with me from wherever you are on your own tarot journey. Also on the the musical front, yes, music has been a very big part of my life this year. I had wonderful opportunity this summer to come up and teach the Tarot Journey Empowerment Workshop in August at Star Nations Academy East in Lowell, Michigan. I'm so appreciative of that opportunity. And we had a, a book signing event, which turned into a wonderful impromptu acoustic music session with my good friend and musician composer Rob Kendall. So it was a night of music and friends and fun. And um, we've done some performing together. So in Port Huron at the Raven Cafe, we've done two shows now and we're collaborating and we've written a song. So music is really expanding and taking off and you will be able to see us, listen to us in 2018 as well. We already have March 30th at the Raven. That's on a Friday evening at 7 p.m. is booked. So come on out to Port Huron on the east side of Michigan, on, right on the uh, Lake Huron. <laughs> Trying to think there for a moment. Whew, it's that Mercury retrograde. Hi, Miss Meg. Thanks for joining us this evening. So come on out to the east side of Michigan to the Raven Cafe. And there will be some more dates um, added all the time. Okay. Good Friday at 730. So there you go. Port Huron, the Raven Cafe. Good Friday at 730. You know, showtime. So we're adding to our repertoire and um, doing acoustic gigs. So those are some, some announcements. And as we always do on the tarot journey, we want to set our sacred space. Um, really coming together because when we are on the tarot journey, we are doing sacred work. We are doing the work of our soul. So in this time of celebrating the birth of light from the deepest recesses of our being, just like the universe is experiencing the birth of light as the winter solstice comes upon us. And it seems like it's the, the longest night when the sun has disappeared. It's the sun has reached its bottommost point of the orbit and so it is born anew as we are anticipating the birth of the light. We call into the void of ourselves to bring out that light. So if you would pray 
with me in your own tradition. We ask for the light to begin with us. We ask for our angels, ancestors, and allies to surround us. We call to the light of the East to bring us great vision and purpose. We call to the light of the South to bring us passion and mastery. We call to the light of the West to bring us healing and remembering, reweaving together in wholesomeness. We call to the light of the North to hold us in prayer and overlight us with the wisdom of the ancestors. We are calling the light from within Grandmother Earth to buoy us and hold our feet steady as we walk our tarot journey, our adventures on this earth. We call the light of Grandfather Sun and Grandmother Moon, who are just joined together at this new moon early this morning. We also call upon the loving light of the morning star Venus who has disappeared for a time. She is sleeping close to the sun that we cannot see her, but she is there and waiting for her to reappear as the evening star in February. And we call to the divine light of creator to hold us in the abundance of pure love, the light from which we were created. Amun, amen. So it is. All righty now. All righty now. Let's talk about tarot old lang syne. What does what does old lang syne mean? It means remembrance. It means literally long time past, days gone by. It's um, most notably, we know the song that is sung at usually the new year, usually this time of year of should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and auld lang syne? For old Lang Syne, my Joe, for old Lang Syne. We'll take a cup of kindness yet for old Lang Syne. So those are words of the poem written by Robert Burns in 1788. And it's popular, of course, in the West to be expressed and talked about and danced at the uh, New Year's celebrations, right? A toast, a kiss at midnight, and old lang syne, everyone. It's long times past. It's old friends remembered. New friends are on the horizon. So this old lang syne, and I wanted to talk about that this evening. So I'm going to pull up this, um, let's see here. Yeah, right here we have the Six of Cups. <laughs> okay, Rob, he's being funny here. It means drunk Scott singing on New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and another announcement. Um, Rob is going to be solo, doing solo gig at the Raven Cafe in Port Huron on February 15th at 7.30 p.m. So, be sure to check him out. He does exceptional work um, solo. So, yes, all Lang Syne can mean John Scott singing on New Year's Eve. But it is that, um, 
let's get together. Let's have a cup of cheer. Let's remember the good old days. And I wanted to show you this card here this evening, the Six of Cups. Cups in the tarot is all about love. It is love. Let's see. Oh, I want to do the other one. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, cups is all about love. Well, let me do that. That looks a little bit better. It's about happy memories. It's about nostalgia. It's good relationships. So good friends, good neighbors, good family. As you can see here in the picture, it's um, a young man with bright, beautiful flowers offering that to a young girl. We usually think of this as the brother and sister card. So for once, big brother is being nice to little sister. Um, you know, sharing a cup of cheer. So that's what I think about when I think of Auld Lang Syne. And how it fits into this time of year is, I think, how we as people are appreciating old times past. This is the time of year that we are anticipating the light and we are gathering together because the days are darker. They're dimmer. It was so uh, rainy here today and it just overcast and really looked dark even at three o'clock in the afternoon. So that dim, that dreariness where the world is even anticipating that light. Oh, please light come back. Um, so we get together around the fireside, we get together around the dinner table to share stories, to spark each other's light. Hey, ladies, Denise, um, we share those family stories. Maybe we look at old photo albums and we watch movies. What are your favorite holiday movies? Maybe it's, um, an old Scrooge movie. Maybe it's Elf. Oh, I love Elf. Just makes me laugh every time. One of my favorite scenes is when he gets that for someone special. <laughs> oh, that's always funny. And going around and around and around in that revolving door. That just gets me every time. And I tell you, one of our traditions um, in the Hedges household is to watch 24 hours of a Christmas story on TNT. Ho, oh, ho, oh, ho, oh, you'll shoot your eye out. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. I just love that movie. We've always loved that movie. <laughs> Elf is the man, says Meg. Yep. Yep. Oh, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Welcome. Home Alone and Bad Santa. I've never seen Bad Santa. Christmas at Plum Creek. Oh, I've not seen that one. Awesome. So you all have your, your great traditions for those holiday stories, those holiday movies, and maybe your favorite holiday songs. What are your favorite songs? What do you like listening to? I have to get a drink there. Hi, Nicole. Um, what are your favorite albums? It's naughty. Hmm, bad Santa, huh? This is naughty. Oh. Do you have your favorite albums? I really love listening to Johnny Mathis. And also one of my favorites is a Sandy Patty album. She's a Christian singer. Now she watches It's a Wonderful Life and White Christmas movies. Yes, all of those wonderful traditions that make us, I think, hi, Carla, bad Santa. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> Dad is the Grinch, huh? Mm. Rob also likes a Charlie Brown Christmas. The Kierkegaard themes. Hmm. Hmm. I love how in the Charlie Brown Christmas, they all come together at the end and even though it seems like a hodgepodge and they're trying to put together their 
their Christmas show. It all comes together because it's the story of light. And they are acknowledging the story of light within themselves. Carla Jo likes to listen to Grandma got run over by a reindeer coming home from our house Christmas Eve. Denise also likes Charlie Brown Christmas and um, those themes. Barbara Streisand Christmas, yes, I like that too, Meg. I love her version of my favorite things. Oh, that is just, just sublime. And no one has a voice like Barbara Streisand, that is true. One of my favorites, my favorite, favorite Christmas song is, well, I have two. So the first one is Merry Christmas, Darling by the Carpenters. And um, my second favorite is It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year by Andy Williams, my favorite. Baby, it's cold outside. Homer and Jethro with June Carter. That's Rob's favorite. <laughs> oh, and Denise also likes that Grandma got ran over by the reindeer. Oh, I love this. I can talk about this all night. So we we all have our traditions of what old Lang Syne means and what what tarot old lang syne we have the six of cups kindness goodwill blessing nostalgia appreciation and it's associated with the sun in the sign of scorpio so it's about magic it's about transition it's about memory and carla joe loves blue christmas Holly, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, yes, they look stuffed and walk around all stiffly. Yes, it's. I think it's kind of like a, a clay animation type thing. And um, Frosty the Snowman, I used to love to watch that too. Because of the tarot, I'm going to take this down here. Because the tarot is a living, breathing volume, and it, it represents all of life, the mundane, the magical. Um, it records the story of the living passing from thought form into form and achievement. And that's what this time of year is all about. Um, our thoughts become our words, become our foundation of life. Holly enjoys Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, yes. All of the Christmas Carol versions. Hmm, good, Neshi. And Meg, it's a better alto than Karen, yes. Denise, a living, breathing volume, yes. That's how I've always seen the tarot, is it's a living, breathing it's a volume. It's it's every single card is its own book, a book of life, a book of you that you can walk with. And every time you interact on the tarot journey, you are adding to that book for everyone and for yourself. So at this time, we are really focused on how our thoughts become words become our foundations which becomes life and really understanding that the whole birth of humanity comes from the heavenly place of light so just as denise talks about balancing heaven and earth on her radio show balancing heaven and earth it is about about balancing the divine light with the daily life divine light with the daily life and these phrases from the Holy Scriptures really came to mind for me as I was thinking about uh, Terrell Auld Lang Syne. So when thought becomes word becomes the foundation for life, it is written that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. 
and that is from John 1.14 in the New Testament. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That's also in John. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. And so, of course, in the scriptures, it's written as son. But it's also, let's see this pop up here in a minute. But it's also son, S-U-N. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. The son or the son as the light is born again. And so that's what came to mind as we're talking about Tara Aldline Zine. Thank you, Denise. Yes, exactly. Thank you. And being the astrologer that I am, I always want to weave in what's going on with the heavens, uh, tying it to as we are walking along here in our earthly life. So we are, um, let me put this up here and try this one too. Can I do, can I do three? Oh, yes, three of them here. Okay, so try to navigate this here. We are moving from the time of Sagittarius, the archer, the hunter, the centaur, into the time of Capricorn, the sea goat. Hey, Lily. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, Lily. Thanks for coming in tonight. We are moving from the time of Sagittarius, which is representative of the temperance card. I'm going to type that in. Temperance is Sagittarius and world is Saturn. So the temperance card here, it's shown as the angel pouring water from one cup to another cup with one foot on land and the other into the sea. And the world over on the far left, it represents Saturn, um, also correlates with the, the sign of Capricorn. So we are in this transition time moving from when the sun in his orbit, moving from the time of Sagittarius, the time of temperance, into the time of Capricorn, which is represented by the world card. Um, Saturn and Capricorn correlate, so they're really the same thing. So moving from balancing or tempering the waters of spirit in the temperance card, pouring from the land to the sea. So the waters of spirit pouring onto the land and vice versa, balancing that, tempering that to the world where it becomes terrestrial, where it becomes solid, where the light, the expanse is, is real. So some of the key words that I like to think of for, for the temperance card and I love to look at this beautiful angel, the angel of the temperance card. It's about balance. As you can see there, the two cups are balancing. It's balancing both the land and the sea. It's balancing both the emotion and the ego. It's balancing the spirit and the solid. So it's balance. It's the middle way or the golden mean. 
the middle way of not too hot, not too cold, like Goldilocks, right? What is going to be that balance there of the celestial and the seasoned? This equilibrium, it's vitality and, and energy because as we are balancing, we are exerting that energy, that force within us to come together as light and form. Uh, combining forces there as well. So balancing the land and the sea, it's synthesis. It's stirring that all together and expanding wisdom. So this is the time that we have been in since right around Thanksgiving time. This is the time expanding thought, synthesis, equilibrium, the golden mean. The balance, the middle way, higher wisdom. Temperance is the angel of wisdom. It's the angel of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is that expanded thought, the higher mind. Always working for freedom and truth. Those are the essential questions of the temperance card. Freedom and truth. And that's what this time is. What are we thinking about? What are we expanding? How are we synthesizing our ideas? And if you go back and take a listen to the beginning of November, I was a guest on Neshi's program, and we talked about Saturn going through Sagittarius and what those essential questions were and what we all were all learning underneath these these planets and these stars. And the word planet, by the way, is simply a Greek word that means wandering star. Because the ancients didn't know that what we call planets didn't have their own light. They just saw them as these big shining orbs, uh, what they could see. So um, they called them stars. So the stars and planets overlighting us really live within us. That light lives within us. Carl Sagan said it best when he said that the nitrogen in our DNA, the, the iron in our blood, the calcium in our teeth, the carbon in our apple pies were all made from exploding stars. We are made of star stuff. You'll have to find that, that actual quote on the web. I think I've uh, kind of changed it a little bit, paraphrased, but Carl Sagan said that we are all made of star stuff and we truly, truly are. So looking at the world card, we are, we are coming into the time of the world card. In fact, um, this Thursday on the 21st is our winter solstice. And that's when the sun officially moves into the time of Capricorn, into the time of the world. The light is born onto the earth, is born into the world on that winter solstice. That longest night is when the birth of light from within us. The flesh becomes real. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. For unto us a child is born. The child of our light, the piece of us that is always shining, always ready, always eager, is born. The sun, the S-O-N and the S-U-N, the sun and the sun. Let me try to find that again. The sun and the sun. Yeah. So as we are moving from this time of Sagittarius, where we have the expanding light and the higher wisdom, into the time of Capricorn, where the word is made flesh, the light is made solid. We have a foundation. These are the questions that we are being asked. These are the questions. What are you doing 
with your expansive ideas, the inspirations, the higher intuition, the, the exploration that you have been doing. What are you doing with those ideas? What is being made manifest with those? That's the first question. The second question is how solid, how solidly formed are your ideas and belief systems, your philosophy of life, your spiritual views? How solid are those? And I'll tell you, this time, I think we are really being tested in that. This whole year, we are really being tested in how solid are my beliefs and philosophies and spiritual understanding and higher wisdom. And you are being asked the same thing. And we are constantly being asked that with all of the situations and relationships and the news Oh, heavens, the news, right? Oh, every time we turn around. And a cool fellow Capricorn, me too. Awesome. Thank you, Neshi. This is great info. Love it. We are being asked how solid is our belief system. So as we are tested through the information superhighway, which is ruled by Uranus. <laughs> Rob loves the news. It's edifying. I think it does edify. It solidifies our own beliefs. So when we have those reactions, this is my opinion, when we have these reactions of, oh, so-and-so is doing this, or this is happening in Washington, or this is on the news, or, or this person saying this, and this tweet just torqued me up, or this Facebook post. It's a question about how solid are our beliefs. I'm not saying that any reaction is good or not good, or should or, or shouldn't. Please, please don't think that. It's a matter of Gauging our own, our own vibration there. And the third question, the third question, excuse me, I have to do it right. The third question is, are you putting into practice what you have learned? Sagittarius is all about learning. Sagittarius is the teacher. Sagittarius is the orator. Sagittarius is the consummate student. Capricorn is the leader, the doer. Also the teacher, but in a different way, more like the headmaster, like the nun with the ruler. Sorry to say, how are you putting into practice what you have learned? All, all your learning, all your teaching, all your talking, all your ideas. Are you putting those into practice? You have to put feet to your dreams. If you want to get something, go somewhere, you have to put feet to your dreams. And those are the three questions, the big questions of this time. We're heading into the, the end of, of the hour here. In just a minute, I'm going to um, open it up. <laughs> Neshi, oh boy, I have learned loads. Yeah, yeah. So now it's time to really evaluate as Terrell Auld Lang Syne, long times past. Are you putting into practice what you have learned? How solid is your belief system? And what are you doing with your expansive ideas? All this higher wisdom, what are you doing with it? This picture I just have to put up. I love it. I love it. I've had it in my in my my uh, scroll of pictures on my phone 
and I just had to use it today. Thank you, Denise. Right on. But I love this picture because you can see here the, the edge of the trunk and this beautiful tusk of a matriarch. I always think of elephant as feminine matriarchal wisdom, so solid on the earth, nurturing, peacemaking. Elephants make sounds that are too low for human ears to perceive, but it rumbles throughout the land. And so she, the matriarch, the elephant, speaks to the earth. I do too. I love the elephants. Speaks to the earth and through the earth. Love. And so I posted, I posted something today. Um, in the energy healing group, if any of you are in Rob's energy healing group, and if not, make sure you get on the list because a lot of good, solid soul work happens in that group. About grace. When we ask for grace, what we sometimes want is clarity and, and resolution. <laughs> but a lot of times when we ask for grace, we get more, how do I want to say, we get more opportunities to be grace. We might get a little more oomph. We might get a little more energy or a little more stamina, but we have to stay the course. Oh, hi, Chris. Brody is watching intensely. So I love this picture of the elephant, that baby elephant. Because there's a baby in all of us. There is that baby light that is being born and being born this time of year. We have to hold on to something. What are we holding on to? Are you holding on to the good memories? Are you holding on to your expansive thoughts? Are you holding on to outworn beliefs that Smell like old rotten fish. <laughs> Are you holding on to grudges, drama from family or friends? Or are you holding on to light being born? And as I was on my way to, to do the show, I, I had this vision that all of us at this time, not just this time of year, but like right now, all of us are being birthed. We are being born, all of us. And I know that every name that I see here scrolling through the chat room, every name, we've all been through some shady stuff this year. Stuff you can't make up. You are quite welcome, Holly. Thank you for making this information friendly and easy to understand. Thank you very much. We have been through some stuff. We are all being birthed. Our light is coming through. Bigger, expansive, more synthesis of the light of who we really are is coming through. But it has to come through this body, these hands, these feet, this hair, you know, these eyes, nose, and elbows. It has to come through. And so this light, and I have this vision of this light is being shoved in. Like, you've seen those ads about the hefty um, garbage sack that you shove it in and you shove it in and you shove it in. And, and it's got elastic now, so it's not going to break. Well. All of that shoving and a pushing and a, a pulling can kind of let us feel misshapen at times. And I think that's what we're feeling is we're feeling misshapen as this light is coming through. This light is coming in. So don't give up hope. 
remember why you came. You came to be the light. You came to translate your brilliant ideas into your elbows, nose, and eyeballs because you are the only one who can see the way you see and sing the way you sing. I love one of my favorite writers, Annie Lamott. She said, all of us, all of us can sing the same song, but we'll have four billion different versions of it. None of them alike. <laughs> now she's ready for December 19th and the 22nd. So just a couple quick things before I open it up for uh, readings. New Moon and Sagittarius. So New Moon about our expansive high ideals, balance, and the golden mean, the middle way. We just had that New Moon this morning, um, 1.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Central Time. So what that means is the sun and the moon are together. They are they are sitting on the couch, Grandfather Sun and Grandmother Moon are sitting on the couch like little lovebirds, kissy, 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 right? They're just talking to each other. And it's the time of rekindling a relationship, something new. So this is the time really to set the tone for your new year. It starts now. So write out your list of what you want to accomplish for 2018 and do your own personal ceremony. You can do a write and burn. Um, you can put it in a jar, your God box, whatever you want to do. I love Meg's idea of a God box. She's shared that with all of us before. So that's happening. Mercury retrograde. Haven't we all been the victim of Mercury retrograde? But it's coming to a close. Mercury retrograde. Um, he stations direct on the 22nd, so at the end of this week. So he's going to slam on his brakes. Because we've been going through, not only have we been asked about our expansive ideas and our belief system and, and are we putting into practice what we have learned. We're all, we've been doing a review. I know from the people I've talked to that old, old, old ancient stuff has been coming up. Why am I thinking about this? Why did this Cross my path? Why did this person from a billion years ago come walking, you know, into the grocery store as I'm a walking out? Boom! I haven't seen her, thought about or heard from this person, and here he is or here she is. Well, that's the nature of retrograde to go back to revisit, to relook at, and refocus. So that's coming to a close. Saturn. Ah, there you go. The end is coming, Nicole. <laughs> Last day of the semester, 22nd for her. Good luck. All your learning turning into good works. Um, so Saturn tomorrow enters into the sign of Capricorn. So Saturn is very much at home here. So the word made flesh, the flesh is really solid on the earth coming solid. So it's all going to be about putting your feet to your dreams. No more talking about it. No more dreaming about it. Let's do something. Let's build something. And you always know that with Saturn, it's going to be long lasting. Winter solstice on Thursday, the sun also reaching into the time of Capricorn. Again, shining the light of let's make a foundation we can really build on and being your integrity, living your integrity. So those are some things coming up in these last few minutes. I want to open it up for anyone who would like a card this evening and I'm going to do it in such a way, unless you have an, um, a question on your heart that you'd really, really like to talk about, please type it in there. Or if you would like, if you would like a card this evening, to illuminate what is the, the answer or the resolution or the blessing or the gift in all of your lessons and challenges of 2017. I did this with another group over the weekend, and it was just mind-blowing. 
and really touching and soul stirring what came up for people as what is the gift in all of this stuff that I have been going through. So if you would like a card, I'm going to be shuffling them here. Just raise your hand in the chat room there. If you would like to know what the tarot has to say is your great lesson or your great blessing or resolution or gift in all of your challenges this year. Hi, Nicole. I see you right there. Let's do this. Okay. Mm. Oh, I like this. So let me take down the elephant as cutie cutie as he is. And let me show you here, Nicole, your card. Oh, let me try to go this up oh, wrong way. Here you go. You have the Knight of Swords, Nicole. You have the Knight of Swords. The Knight is always on a quest, the quest for knowledge, the quest for pure thought, the quest for clear understanding and insight in a way to proceed in an honorable manner. So that is your gift, your insight, your, your resolution for all of the lessons and challenges that you've had in 2017. And I like that. Okay. This Carla Joe. This Carla Joe. This Carla Joe. This one popped right out. I love it. They always tell me. Here you have the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords for you, Carla Jo. The Queen is the emotional intelligence. The Queen is always emotional intelligence. She has learned. She has spoken with grace. So grace is abounding for you. Grace is growing for you. Grace for yourself, grace for life, grace for the people around you. It's grace. That is the, the word that keeps coming over and over again is just grace. That's wonderful, Carla Jo. Holly. Holly. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Holly, your card. I'm trying to get this in the camera here. The Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is the emotional intelligence of passion and motivation. So the Queen of Wands has her inner fire kindled, specifically the Hara. The Hara is going to be your sacral chakra, your second chakra. So that Hara, that creative center, is burning and churning like a volcano. Um, but it's steady. So the Queen, the Queen of Wands knows how to temper herself. Ah, oh, gosh. I'm trying to get it right to get these in the camera so people can see. So the Queen of Wands has tempered herself. So those fires are burning. They are being stoked. And do not worry. What you are creating, what you have to say, what you have to bring forth is coming at the right time. And trust when it comes out like a volcano. Trust it. Okay. All righty. You have Chris. Okay, you and Brody. Let's see here. Hmm. All this royalty tonight. We have the Queen of Cups for you, my dear. The Queen of Cups.
The Queen of Cups is emotional intelligence and well-being, healing. Healing, well-being. That's what this is for you. You have been on a healing journey this year. And this is, this Queen of Cups is all about distilling down the, the healing journey into spiritual terms. What does it mean inside your body? Um, what is the actual gift from spirit? So you can message me if you want a little bit more about that. Um, but that's what I'm, I'm getting specifically there about, um, about new spiritual information coming in to your body. Anybody I missed this evening? Rob. Let's see here. Rob. Okay, here you have the Ace of Cups. So this is creativity. This is um, creative gifts. This is artistry. This is healing. This is all about digging in deep to pull out and weave together a tapestry of all of your gifts. Really putting those pieces together. And all of these things have been coming to light for you. And now they are going to be woven together in this amazing tapestry. So I want to thank you all. I've gone over a little bit on the broadcast tonight. I want to thank you all for joining me this evening for Tara Aldlein Zion. It's always a joy. And may the peace that surpasses all human understanding be with each and every one of you. Happy Christmas. Blessed New Year. Om Shanti. And good night.